I've been asked to put up a video by one of my subscribers to show how I make a Portsmouth loop rig. And this is what I use to, to make it. I use the smallest beads I can, so these are 3 mil beads, obviously it doesn't matter about the colour. Three little swivels, I think these are 45 pound ones. A lead clip. A breakaway quick link. That's one of the mini ones. Again, I think that's 45 pound. One cascade swivel. Two sweet sequins. Not everybody uses sequins, but I do. Um, two hooks. And these can be your choice, whatever. Today I'm using 2 Cox and Wool, an SRT spring, and this is rig tubing. Um, you can alternatively use some shock leader, just tying a stock knot. You can use power gum, or anything really. It's just to stop the beads moving up and down the, the rig line, the rig body. And this is what I prefer to use, the SO Ultra Flex. This is on a 70 pound, I prefer the 50, but I'm still using the 70 because that's all they had. And Amnesia on a 20 pound. For a two hook version of the, of this rig, you can make a three hook version. So I just start off putting the, the bottom hook on. And like I say, I've made these with small hooks for the, for general fishing, or you can make the many size hooks you like. And I'm just using a, a uni knot. You can obviously whatever use whatever knot you're comfortable with using. And to be honest, I often just use a three turn knot. Hasn't let me down yet. But obviously, the thinner what um, line you use the more turns you need but I will I'll just stick to a three turn for the moment there it is cinch it down a little bit moisten and cinch down Cut off the tag end. I always go as tight as I can. And then, only about three inches up, cut the line. Now this is the key to this rig for me. This bottom snood, I will be making really short. Because when you clip it up, um, what you put on the end of this little snood is the cascade swivel so that uh, to that attaches your second hook so as long as you've got this small enough but big enough for your bait that the, the shorter you get it the closer the other bait will be to this bait so that it will be more streamlined you'll see this later so hook on sequin and again, as I'm using a crab, sequin is really not important here. And your cascade swivel. Now, for goodness sake, make sure you get your cascade swivel the right way around. Because if you don't, you have to cut your egg and do it all over again. Ask me how I know. So what you need, when you're bringing it down to the hook, if you pull the line as if you're um, finished it needs to be that way round so that the top hook can connect to it so like I say I'm going to be using half of crabs so I'll probably just make that about two inches but again to be honest if I'm doing worms I don't tend to go too long here anyway because especially on the competitions keep the bait small because you're trying to attract 
any fish. Right, that time, if you're astute, you would have noticed I did a grin or not. I tend to do grin or nots when I haven't got so much line spare. So, moisten and um, cinch. And pull to tight enough. That's the trouble with the gridder. It does take a lot more pulling. So I will use my um, knot puller. Put it in the swivel. Grab the line. More oyster. Focus. Pull. And there you go, that'll do. Cut off the tag. And there is your first swivel. Your first snood. Actually, if you look up here, that tag's a little bit long. And it might interfere with the um, the hook release, so I'm going to trim that a bit more. There you go, that's a bit better. Right, the second snood, and this is going to ultimately decide on the length of the rig body. Just feed on secret and hook. Um, the length of this snood basically decides on the length of everything. Because unlike the bottom snood, the, the bottom snood's length is determined by the, the size of your loop. Hence the loop rig. Because the, the loop can be reasonably any size you like because it doesn't get in the way, in theory. Now this one, when it's all clipped up, just dangles down parallel to the line. One second. Moisten. Cinch, see if this one cinches better. Yep. There we go. So now, measure out as long as you want it. Now I tend to go foot to 18 inches on this one. So I'll cut it off something like that. And this one, we now attach to what will be the top swivel on the rig body. Because I've got spare here, this time I'll use a loop rig. That well, I keep saying a loop rig. This time I use a uni knot. But you know why I say a loop knot? Because it's got a blooming loop on it. So I've done a four turn uni knot. Moisten. And cinch down. Now this one, because this swivel so small, won't fit into the, the knot puller. So I'll use the gripper lid as a knot puller. There you go, so that's tight. So that's the two snoods made. So now we actually can start assembling the rig. So the first thing, we get the lead clip. But I um, always prefer to have a, a swivel down near the lead, next to the lead. So what I do, and again this is thanks to Justin at Lock, Stock and Tackle. Um, so is this rig by the way. He, he, he went out of his way to show me how to make this rig. So it's thanks to him. So I'm going to attach a swivel to that 
link. So you get your pair of pliers. I'm just going to do this off camera so I can see what I'm doing there. And you, you grab the eye. In the pliers. And bend. Now that bend sometimes isn't big enough, the gap, to fit the swivel over. Sorry, it's very difficult to see the swivel the other side of the phone. So there you go, that fitted on. So now we're going to bend that back into its normal place. Just bring it out of view so I can grab hold of it. Then bend it back so that the swivel doesn't fall off be a bit fiddly that done it not quite yep that's good so there you go so now we can start building the the rig but what I do, I now feed everything that I'm going to put on the rig backwards. So I end up not wasting too much of my shock leader or the rig body line. So the very first thing, if you now go up to the other end, we want the, the top hooks swivel. Ultimately, when the rig is built, I won't have a bead between this swivel and the, the top hook because it doesn't matter if it slides up. So we feed on the top swivel with the long snood and we go up. So now after the top swivel, you feed on a one of the beads that came out of the SRT rig set. Then you put the SRT spring on. Then you fit another bees out of the packet. So those two beads now sit either side of the SRT spring. But on the rig, to stop the SRT spring beads and the SRT moving up and down, we now put a section of this rig tubing. So you feed, you cut off a small section. I tend to do something similar to about a centimetre. Now I'll feed this up a fair way to where, whereabouts it will be. And then you have to feed the line back through the tubing. The critical thing with this tubing is that you have to make sure that the two lines through the tubing are parallel and not crossed over. If they're crossed over, when you tighten up the, the loop that's formed, you will not be able to move this knot. So I'm now pulling the pulling the loop, making it smaller, smaller. But I'm not gonna pull it tight yet, because I've got the rest of the rig to make up and I don't know where I want that to stand. So now we come down the other end of the rig and we get another piece of tubing because we're now going to be down towards the, the lead. So we do the same with this tube, pull it through, short way, feed the line back over, making sure it's parallel and it's not going to be tying a knot. Right. 
Now we need a bead. This is just an ordinary three mil bead. It doesn't need to be one of the ones out of the kit because it's not going by the spring. It's going down by the lead link. So now we put on what will be the bottom swivel for the bottom snood then another three mil bead then tie on your lead link your lead link obviously doesn't have to be this this is what I've made um, just attaching a 45 pound swivel to one of these um, lead links I like having a swivel by my by my weight you can tie on whatever you like and like I keep saying, that's the beauty of doing these things. You can actually tie on whatever you want. So, bring it over. I'm going to do myself a, a small little uni knot. One, two. Three, moisten, tighten, cover on phone. cinch cut off the tag and now we can start doing the final adjustments so bring the two beads and the swivel down to the lead if like it's happened here this has started to close up you need to Loosen it up. And just bring it down. So there we go. So now we can pull that tight. And as we pull that tight, you watch that rig tube in. It does that now if I've got it right well, I'm actually not sure if I add a lot of moisture to that it will slide up and down I've got a feeling that I got this one wrong but let's try it a lot of moisture pull it no there you go it did it came down but you do have to put a lot of pressure on them to move them so they're pretty good when I was shown how to make this at this point, and at the other point, I think they were showing me to put two of these because it's a high pressure point. But me be me, I don't. I just go with the one. So that's there. So now we can do our bottom snood. So on the bottom snood, we're now attaching the loop that gives this rig its name and I always use this I always use shock leader for this this one's 50 pounds but you can use whatever you don't need to use shock leader but I like using it because it's thicker and it makes the loop stay more of a loop and it doesn't you know, you could make it out of 15 pound mono, but then the loop I would suggest would um, collapse and might possibly tangle with the rest of the rig. So now you pull off whatever you want, and I tend to do similar to the top 18 inches or so, so that ultimately. 
you're going to end up with a one up one down at about 18 inches so the bottom of this has gone on to the cascade now the other end is now going to go on to the bottom swivel on the rig body so you can see once this is all tied up you've got 18 inches plus a couple of inches of rig length on the bottom snood so that will kick out from the lead and it will sit far enough away and trim so to recap then lead link bead swivel and attached to the swivel is your bottom snood about 18 inches connected to the cascade swivel connected to the bottom hook so to set this up Attach your, your weight to the bottom lead link. Now, holding the lead still, come up to your spring and ultimately your top snood. So you connect your bottom hook onto your lead then you connect your top hook to your cascade swivel and lowering the lead down and you can see the hoop the loop that's formed for the loop rig here lowering the lead down and the main line you pull the main line through until you get to your spring. Now your spring at this point you should be able to if you've got it close to right of where you've got this bottom one That slipped off, so we've got to move them up. So basically, you now have to adjust this stop up and down until you've got your spring slightly under tension. And when you've got it set up right, you have your your bottom hook clipped on the weight, your second hook clipped on to the cascade here's the loop coming off now the top hook comes up to the spring and you can see there's a little bit of tension there which is what you want so we can now about six inches above the um, The top snood, you can cut it so you haven't wasted a lot of line. And now tie on your um, your top link. Three turn uni because it's thick line. And I know everybody's going to say you need more than three turns, but that's down to you. Third turn. Tighten. Moisten.
inch down. We are all finished then. So here's the the loop from the the loop rig, and as you can see, it stands off from the bottom swivel, which is pinched between two beads, the stop knot or the gum or the rig tu tubing, and then there's the second hook that's connected to the cascade and here's the main line behind going up, up, up to the the stop knot the bead SRT bead top swivel with the lead link not your lead link your main line connector up the top so you can see from this angle those two hooks are quite close together so it's streamlined because these two baits are then close behind the weight and they're not up here causing another obstruction in the flight. I hope that was suitably explained if not feel free to ask me a question comment below